Welcome to the PHNX Coyotes post-game show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. I'm Liam Merrill here with Steve Peters. We didn't even roll an intro because we were just <laughs> too excited to Skip get Skip the intro on PHNX, Coyotes After Dark. PHNX Coyotes After Dark. Let's go. Did anybody see this coming? Because LFG. I didn't. I certainly didn't. <laughs> Good honestly. grief. Wow. Oh I honestly God. don't know where to start. Well, I guess you do start. You got to start with uh, Karel Vomelka. Starting his fourth game in a row. <sighs> I mean... <laughs> he steals the game. That's I don't know what you say. I mean, I'm literally speechless. Um, oh, super th- chat. <laughs> if not for Famelka, this game is it's Toronto outplayed, outshot, oh outskated, my gosh. out everything to the Coyotes. But you know what? From day one, we've said the only way this team wins is when the goalie plays real well and they're going to have to find a way to score late in the game and they get a 2 1 win. Well, there it was. This is Coyote hockey, unfortunately. And, Very true. And if you're going to this- get a win, it's sure nice to get one against the Toronto Maple Leafs. It sure is, especially after the day we've had on Twitter, which we'll get to later. The super chat from Ruler14. I've noticed Toronto and Montreal are the main relocator fans when it comes to the Yotes. So let's turn of the tank for them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we'll take a turn of the tank tonight for sure. Because yeah. it, it's it's one of those fan bases that they just they they're so elitist that they hate everyone, right? And I, I get that. Like I get it, but like pick on the poor coyotes like last place i know six it's... guys out with covid guys yeah pick on us yeah good take it out on the coyotes so it is nice to beat them on the scoreboard even if you really didn't beat them on the score sheet you know and you know everybody got what they wanted matthews kept the streak alive the the boy comes home prodigal son comes home gets a big goal continues his streak so leafs fans and, and coyote nine fans can all nine game road scoring streak which tie or sets a leafs franchise record yeah, but Fun did you fact. see him in this game though? Just his skill and his ability to handle the puck is just elite. Like he, he's on the ice. It seems like he's on the ice all the time. What, what did he? What did he finish with with ice time? With time twenty three fifty one. He had five shots, two attempts, and blocks. So he's he's getting the puck at the net all the time. He always has the puck on a stick. He makes great plays with it. The one on one plays he makes are just elite. I mean, they're they're high high end. We're gonna see it again. This weekend when when we play Colorado twice, um, but I tell you what, he is so fun to watch. He's worth the the price of admission to watch Austin Matthews play, and and I am happy he got his goal. To be honest, I mean, absolutely, I'm rooting for the kid. It's an Arizona kid, and and to see him do well in the league is fantastic. So I'm happy for him, but I I, I still am stunned that that we're walking away talking at, at the Coyotes after dark about a Coyotes win against Toronto. I bet you DraftKings didn't see that one coming. They sure didn't, but DraftKings did see the Austin Matthews goals coming. He has nine goals in uh, four career games against the Coyotes, I think. So those were minus odds. Yeah, he was minus it. 150 for an anytime as score. An any, as an anytime scorer. I've, I've never seen Draft a minus score anytime that. score. Oh, I know. Boy. Absolutely insane. But like you said, I mean, Veggie was the story of the night. Um, just absolutely unreal. I've never yelled so much watching a game, 45 saves. Like he's done this multiple times and it's always against the Canadian teams. It's incredible. Oh, we got yeah. another, another super chat from Monsieur Salon. I don't know what to tell you. Carell is just robbing hockey games better than Vasilevsky. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Let's not whoa, jump whoa, the gun. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Pump the brakes a little bit. It was, yeah. I mean, it was a great game, but... <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it, and you know what? With with Carell, and it, the concern I had going into this game with Wedgwood, I'm not available. You look at Carell, the last time he started four games in a row, he struggled a little bit in the third and the fourth game. So you start to go, oh, goodness, is this when when it finally, the wheels fall off for a little bit? Um, But he was outstanding again. And, and you can't keep going to the well expecting him to make 40, 45, 46 no. saves. But <laughs> you know what? The difference for me with him tonight, he was more compact, we call it. So he was not sliding all over the net. When he looks, when he gets outside of his blue, when he's sliding around and looking out of control, that's when Veggie's in trouble. And tonight, he just looked on, honestly, from the very beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. He was compact. The puck came to him. He had, you know, short, small movements. He didn't have to waste a lot of energy. 
He swallowed up rebounds and he just looked solid. So you knew coming out of the first period that you go, holy cow, Coyotes might have a chance here. And and again, I the, the penalties early and, and they had 11 shots on the first two period penalties that the uh, Maple Leafs had 11 shots. You go, uh oh, like this could be a long night. And he just shut the door and gave the young defensemen that haven't had a lot of experience, gave them a chance to settle in. And by the third period, I thought the defense looked good. These young yeah. defensemen. It was a good, good, good way for Kolya Chonak to jump into the league against the Leafs. And <laughs> it was a good solid game for those young defensemen. Yeah. So a lot of storylines to get to here, but let's just start with the night by the numbers, a snapshot of how everything went. We've kind of alluded to it. Um, 46 shots from the Leafs compared to 18 <laughs> from the Coyotes. And 13 um, of those are for Matthews and Nylander. I mean, Nylander <laughs> had eight shots, one missed shot, two attempts blocked. He had a, he had 11 attempts at net. That's unbelievable. That's how many insane. how many shots they were firing at this goaltender. Um, power play opportunities both over two. I was nervous in the first period when. The, there were a bunch of penalties, but the game kind of evened out. So not nothing too crazy on either side. Good for the Coyotes to stop the number one power play in the NHL, which we'll get to later when we look at your keys. And then faceoffs pretty equal. So the only stat here that is not it's, equal. It's, it's alarming. It, it's, it really it's, is a shot. It, I mean, six shots a period for the Coyotes. And that's not even an average. That's literally what they had. Yeah. Six yeah. shots per period. And the fact that they still pulled off a win is just absolutely yeah i i have a feeling craig's gonna be a little late to the show tonight because he's gonna have all that availability and guys are gonna be pretty pumped up because this is a team you're on national television and, and can we talk about that too the tnt broadcast oh my god first of all paul heavy Bissonnette. coyote presence <laughs> paul Bissonnette, show the right? picture of paul Bissonnette for those who didn't see him on the broadcast um <laughs> wearing supporting the... <laughs> his coyotes his former team and i tell you what howling on live national television doing the coyote howl he did it, it so many times it's so impressive and he said he called it. he said trap game he said coyotes are gonna win this one <laughs> you got rick talkett on the panel too so you got a heavy coyote panel um the talk was a little quieter on the panel today than Biss. i don't think he had a lot to say <laughs> uh, but did you see the stick breaking thing? Yes. Man, wait, like well, we're not doing that, Leah. I mean, we do we we do some things. We're not doing that. So Petey, scratch during that the off today. season, we're gonna have to come up with some ideas. Jesus. So we might have to borrow from. Our yeah, we don't have the budget to be breaking sticks either. But <laughs> but again, so you look at the Coyotes on a national stage, and you go, the first game is a it's a five to one, and Boston is 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 pumping Montreal in the early game, and you're looking at two teams that are on the top of their game right now. Boston's on fire. Montreal's towards the bottom now and last. The Coyotes are playing Toronto, who's a team on the, you know, a, a playoff bound team, and they're in last. You go, oh, another, it's going to be another 5 1, 6 1 game. What an awful nationally televised game for TNT. And, and the storyline was Karel Vimelka, and he kept it in it. And, you know, Paul Bissonnette, he called it. It was a big win for the Oats. I, I'm still stunned it didn't, because Toronto came out so fast in this game because I think they knew this could be a trap game, and I think they knew they had to play well to win the game. And, and I thought they did play well. They moved the puck incredibly well. Um, so much skill and talent on the team. And Mitch Marner's still out with COVID. So yeah. you're going to add more skill and talent. And I, this is a good hockey team. That Eastern Conference right now, I've watched Boston play a lot lately. That's a really good hockey team. Tampa is still, still one of the elite teams in the league. There's some good teams in that Eastern Conference. Um, there's going to be quite a battle through the playoffs. That's coming up soon. Definitely. Well, let's get to your keys because <laughs> – very interesting to see you know, how the Coyotes did. The keys, Leah, and I sat there in the afternoon thinking about the keys, and really, and I'm, I, I feel remiss because it should have been three keys. Should have been Vamelka, Vamelka, Vamelka. It really <laughs> should have been. And going into the game with the defense that they played with tonight, you knew they were going to have good goaltending, and I just didn't get it on there, and that's my fault. Penalties against the number one team on the power play in the league. They took way too many penalties last game. They took they had six oh my plays God. last game against um, no home cooking. Stop Austin Matthews. <laughs> Couldn't he do was that. the best player. He was the best player on the ice for both teams. He was outstanding. Um, they kept him off the score sheet. One goal for, for Matthews. He, I think uh, DraftKings had him at what was he one and a half? I think it was the over under on Matthews. Um, so yeah. 
keeping him to one, I, I think that that counts. We keep, we did a good job there and start and be ready on time. Good grief. Shots were 16 to three at one point in the first period. So I don't know if they're ready to start on time, but again, put that off to the core of young defensemen. I mean, they had four defensemen that are under 23 years old playing tonight. They, I, I think this is what you would expect. It's going to be a tough start. You had guys with nerves. They're playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I, I think if all things considered, that that's a heck of a hockey game f- for this this team. Even though they had to rely heavily on their goaltender, they still found a way to win the game. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the key that also wasn't on there that you and I had talked about earlier is just, you know, this is a national game. So show up for it. And as a Coyotes fan, I'm – proud of that 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 was the game that was on national tv and that was the game that you know toronto fans and toronto media got to watch the coyotes don't have a lot of wins this season they don't have a lot of you know major performances to tip their cap to and this was one and great for vimelka to you know get his spotlight ryan dezingle came back for his first game since december 10th and scored two i mean i don't I don't think people in Toronto who can only probably name Clayton Keller and Jacob Chikrin on the Coyotes saw Ryan Dezingle scoring two goals against the Leafs tonight, but that's what happened. Yeah, former Ottawa Senator, so familiar with him, just not here. And it, it's no. lucky, I mean, lucky for the Coyotes, he was able to, to come back tonight for good timing, good grief. With all the guys they have going back onto the COVID list, it was nice to get somebody back from injury. Definitely, including <laughs> Andre Tourney is out, so they they had to – not only call up Victor Soderstrom and Kolya Chanak, who, who made his NHL debut tonight, um, who was also the seventh Coyote to make his NHL debut this, so far this season, which is insane. The franchise record is nine, which I we're not even halfway believe, through the season. Yet. I believe will surpass this year. Um, but uh, Jay Verity was on the Coyotes the bench call. tonight too. He got the call got up the call also. Up. He had so. to make the drive. Maybe he gave those guys a ride from Tucson, saved gas money. Yeah, carpool, right. <laughs> and one more guy I want to talk about too. Um, the, the Coyotes video coach, Hunter Cherney, also added to the COVID-19 list, which gave Jake Schmick the opportunity to become a video coach for the day in the NHL. And, and Jake was, when I worked at the Coyotes, Jake was an intern. And I tell you what, he was just a kid, so I'm going to call him kid. I, I know he's not a kid, but to me, he is. Um, worked a lot of hard hours, doing a lot of hard jobs for very little to no pay for a very long time. Um, did everything he was asked. Unbelievably um, hardworking kid. Knows his hockey. Knows the com- way around a computer. He helped me on the Hawkeye for years um, when I worked downstairs. And he, he gave me a call today and said he was going to get a chance to be the video guy. And he'd have to make Hawkeye calls. And I, I'm just so proud of him, and I know he's he deserves it. He's earned it. He he works hard enough. He should be in the National Hockey League, and I just want to say congratulations to Jake Schmick. So awesome! Great to That's see two cents. Way to go, Jake. Yeah, great to see some um, people making everybody their has to step up right? all around. Yeah, everybody absolutely. Has to step up during this COVID, I mean, you, you saw it from the coaching staff. You see it behind the scenes. You had you have other people that we don't talk about on the show, but they were out too. You had a bunch of Tucson Roadrunner staff members on the bench today. Not just Jay Verity, but medical trainers, and now it's it's more than just the players. It's taken a toll on everybody. Everybody mm-hmm. stepped up and. Um, able to find a way to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, just stunning. stunning. In Toronto. And I know their fans are all listening right now too, right, Leah? Like oh, they're yeah. all dialed in. Oh, yeah. They're t- they're tuned into this one for sure. Um, the, the Toronto fans were up in the mentions today because Craig just wrote his hypothetical. Here's what the Coyotes would need to do to, you know, make – Arizona a landing spot for Austin Matthews and it was very like if you read the article on gophnx.com you would see it was a laundry list of things and it, I thought it was very realistic I did and too and the headline was, is shocking right like the headlines oh Austin Matthews not no read the article read the article Look yeah at the like hurdles. clearly everyone who was commenting didn't actually read the article because it was not like haha it was more like this is a long list of things yeah. that need to be done and it, the article's unlocked at gophnx.com, so you could read it even without a membership. So no excuses for those Toronto fans who were being mean on Twitter. There was honestly no need to be mean because re- the reality of it was there are so many people in this marketplace and around the league, oh, when Austin, when his contract's up, he's going to Phoenix. 
he's going to go back and play for the Arizona Coyotes. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe not because there are so um, many things in the way for getting a superstar to come play here. And, and I thought Craig nailed it on the article. I think everything he said is accurate. I think those are the things mm-hmm. that are going to be a shortcoming. I talked to some people today outside of this organization. And one of the things they said about Austin Matthews, a lot of the things that the, the, the factors that get, that get free agents to come to a city one, and it always is one and it's number one everywhere. And they'll always tell you it's not for number one. It's for the money, money, Guys always, I'm so tired of it. It's not from bullshit. It's the money. So money's number one. Two, guys do want to win. Guys want to be in a team that's competitive. There's absolutely true. And they look at teams that have a stable organization. They have stable ownership and that they have great facilities, meaning practice facilities and arenas. And right now, Arizona Coyotes don't check those boxes. So if you don't check those boxes, you're not going to get a superstar here. So the thought of Austin Matthews coming here, the, the people outside said he might when he's 34 or 35 or 36, when he's thinking about his last contract and he wants to be somewhere warm and he can golf and they have a new arena and maybe by then they're through all of this mess. They thought that made more sense. And you know what? They might be right. So someday maybe he'll play here. We'll continue to talk about it because it's fun. Everyone in the comments saying like, oh, Toronto fans being oversensitive. What else is new? Also, these made a good point that the Suns beat the Raptors last night, and now the Coyotes beat the Leafs <laughs> wow. tonight. So Arizona just owns Toronto this week. And I'm saying that, everyone, as someone who's from Toronto, who is actually a major Raptors fan and was born a Leafs fan. Um, I think I actually have a photo of myself from 25 years ago somewhere here. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Starting off early. They're kind of young there in Toronto, don't they? They and really do. The hometown team. I was given no choice. And then my dad and I decided we would leave that behind us. So Same hair do I have tonight. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's very cute, Leah. That's a oh, very my cute picture. gosh. Anyway. <laughs> Back back to the program. Back well, everyone's been saying in the comments nonstop tonight, and I think we shouldn't wait any longer. Oh, let's get to our DraftKings King of the yet? Game. No, there's just been so. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> <laughs> that is classic crown placement Sean. by Sean. That's good. That's good, Veggie. Sean. Oh my god, Veggie. For the audio only, that was broccoli with a <laughs> it crown. It was a picture of broccoli with a crown on it. <laughs> yep, there it is. Oh, 45 Lord. saves, one goal against one of the hottest teams in the league right now. Uh, 0.978 save percentage. Just an absolutely unreal when he is performance. Good, he is unbelievably good, isn't he? Like it, when, when he is on and he has those nights when you're getting to 30, 40, 45 saves, you're going, wow. He is on, and I, I saw a few comments about, oh, we can't trade him. Corelva Milk is not getting traded at the deadline. Like this, the, I don't see that being a possibility at all, that they're going to get rid of Corelva Milk at the trade deadline. No, but you know what's exciting long. about that? This is his first year in the NHL, his first year playing the North American game, and yes, he's had some really bad showings, but he's had some incredible, incredible showings as well so if you can just kind of bridge the gap between you know performances like tonight and the one against Winnipeg and you know some of those more bigger blowout games and kind of meet somewhere in the middle more consistently like Carol Vimelka could be part of this team's future down the road he's still you know relatively young or if not he can be a valuable trade asset not this year but down the road so yeah and when you're in a rebuild like this he is the kind of guy you want like he's he doesn't cost him a lot of money right and and you can put him out there every night. If you're not trying to win, there's really no pressure on him. He checks a lot of boxes for what they're trying to do for the rebuild. So one, you don't need to trade him. I don't see any reason that Wedgwood and Vimelka are impacted the two goaltenders next year. And just let him see what he can do. He's an older guy. He's played pro hockey in the in, in Czech for quite a while. He won two champions there, championships there in the Czech League. So it's not like he's he's a young guy. Like he's in his mid twenties. He's a he's we're the same mature. age. Yeah, he's a mature <laughs> goaltender. I don't, I, yeah, I'm not ready to sign you for the Coyotes quite yet, Leo. But, but he's <laughs> he um he he's not going anywhere. He's going to be the guy. Now is he the goalie of the future? They still think it's it's Prozvatov, um, and he's playing well. Who, in Tucson, and Prozvatov 
But oh, Plasmatov was tonight. the backup tonight for the Coyotes. Yeah. So who played down there? Kojanesh played down who, in Tucson. Who played for Tucson tonight just in general? Because everyone. Can you imagine that roster? <laughs> wow. But they got a win tonight in San Jose. So they yes. got a big win. So they won 4-3 on the road in San Jose. And they're still hanging around the Pacific Division. Look at this. Even Look at the big, depleted roster. Big week for, you know, so far the Suns, the Coyotes, the Roadrunners. You could have made some good, good money betting on the Arizona Coyotes tonight. <laughs> and I know could've. you and Sean, maybe not, not so much. Saying what I did. I'm, I'm saying not saying could've. either. I'm just, you know, but um, hopefully, you know, these wins is laying the groundwork leading into this NFL weekend coming up. The Cardinals are facing LA in the first round of the NFL playoffs. And uh, this week at the DraftKings Sportsbook app, if you bet, uh, new customers can get 56 to 1 odds on any wildcard team to win their game. Bet just $5 and win $200, $280 in free bets. If your team is victorious, that's signing up using the promo code PHNX. All customers can also get in on DraftKings Hammer the Over promotion. For every 5,000 bettors who take the over for Saturday night's Patriots versus Bills game, the point total will lower by half a point. Hammer the Over has it hit zero every time DraftKings has run it. So betters won when the first point was scored. Use promo code PHNX, get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team, bet $5 and win 280 in free bets. If your team wins, that's 21 and over Arizona only gambling problem. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. So let's hope the luck continues for the Cardinals, too bad they're not playing a yeah. Toronto-based team because Toronto there are the Argos. <laughs> Neither be the yeah. Argos Cardinals game on Monday yeah. night. Yeah, that's for sure what's I'd happening. Like their chances there. And let's talk about a few more of the Coyote players before we move on to the next thing too. I thought Phil Kessel had a really good game oh tonight, my but his God, feet were phenomenal. moving, shots at net, great chances early. Um, uh, Clayton Keller again. I thought early again early. They picked the pocket. Uh, on his back check, he was able to make plays. He skated again tonight. Like I thought Clayton Keller played 200 feet again. And the one that I've been waiting for, um, Nick Schmaltz comes up again, playing on the playing down in the bottom six again tonight, but he comes up with the play of the game on the game winning goal with an yeah. unbelievable pass through sticks right on the tape of the Zingle. So I think there were some good performances and I thought the defensive core as a whole, this group played really well. There was no big mistake. Even on the goal that they gave up, it wasn't a huge mistake by the defenseman. I mean, it, it's a one-on-one, -on -one and Matthew's unbelievable shot top shelf. Um, so I think all around, even on a game that they're outshot almost three to one, I, I think that's what we expected, right? We'll take it. We'll take the win. I know. Let's, let's I know. Take the win and just, let's move on. It's crazy. It doesn't though, get easier. Look at this. Defensive core for the Coyotes tonight. Mayo, Mosier, Soderstrom, Kaliachanek. Like, that was four of the six defensemen were all basically – it was the Tucson Roadrunners defensemen. I think Mosier's continuing to, you know, make an impact. And, again, it was really cool on the broadcast tonight to see him getting some attention and background and stuff like that. And it's funny because on the broadcast, too, they even mentioned that Schmaltz hasn't been – this was before that assist, too, but, you know – kind of what you've been saying for the last few weeks is that he hasn't really been stepping up to, you know, what he, he should yeah, his, be he, feeling. He should be providing more offense for this team, the way he can skate in his hands and, and his playmaking ability. He should be an offensive threat when he's on the ice and he just hasn't been to this point. And I know he was injured for a big part of the year. So, so maybe it's coming, but um, you'd like to see him be more consistent with his effort because I think that would help him um, produce more points. Definitely. Um, Tim in the chat said, we're not talking enough about Dezingle. Sorry. <laughs> any no, other night, like, he would have, any other right. night, he would have been our DraftKings king of the game. It's it's funny, but just Vemelko was so un unbelievable. It was no contest, but um, Dezingle, this was his 10th career two goal game. So and nice you know stat for him. He, he He's a guy that it brings energy. And when he's out of the lineup, you notice it. So you've got guys like Roussel and Beagle and Dezingle are all guys that get to the net hard. Boyd can be included in that group too. And they they put in 
put on the work boots and they play hard. And he drove the net hard tonight and he deserved those goals. I mean, you saw that, that first one bounces off the glass. He bats it out of the air. That's an unbelievably skilled hand eye coordination goal. Like the using the speed. boards as the assist. Like that was incredible. <laughs> that was insane. Yeah. So I, I'm really happy for a comeback. You, you try to get your feet wet and try to just get your legs back underneath you. And he, he provided all the offense for the team. And he looked really good. So I, you know what? I, it's one of those nights you enjoy the two points because when you wake up tomorrow, your next opponent is the Colorado Avalanche. And if those fans have looked at how this team has done against the Avs the last few years, it hasn't been very good. No. So – Enjoy the two points from Toronto because I I, I think they're in trouble heading heading into Ball Arena, but we'll see. Um, Craig just texted that he's in the elevator, so oh, wow. we're on we're on elevator watch for Craig. Um, I know he's excited for this one tonight because he was also getting dragged on Twitter today by Maple Leafs fans. So we have some he stuff really planned. Did. We have some stuff planned for when when Craig gets here. <laughs> um, there's a comment that Tucson won two hockey games tonight. I like wow. that. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> and wow. I'm sure it's a little extra salt in the wound for the Leafs fans that. Um, there were so many regulars out of the Yeah, lineup. and Tim said that too. He said when they scored, and they scored 14 seconds into the third period, you go, oh, oh, here it comes. Like, here it comes. It was fun. Oh, yeah. You know, it, we made it till 930, which is regular time for our games to be over. So we kind of <laughs> won on the clock, and we're just going to get rolled here. And it just didn't happen. I know. So I agree with Tim. I did. I was sitting at home going, oh, oh here comes And the by the way, game. the last two minutes when the Leafs pulled their goalie, I, like my heart was legitimately pounding. <laughs> like I was nervous. Were you? Hey, you know, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> no, you didn't no. care. It's game but one I three just, two, Leah. P- you don't get nervous. Petey, games one three. No, two. PD. All of the eight o'clock games go to overtime. I know. I, it's only I the eight o'clock games. <laughs> As I was taking my six o'clock nap today, I go, "This is going into overtime for sure." I you took you took a nap at six. I didn't. I didn't. PD. Also, someone asked earlier, is that a puzzle behind you? A glue it is. Puzzle? I brought in my puzzle of road signs. It's a thousand piece puzzle glued together on famous road signs. And Bob's big th- boy is right I in the I know uh, the people were asking. Yeah. I said time. I was going to put a puzzle up every show. And I there's a puzzle we did All during right. the Christmas break with the in-laws. There it is. Is Craig there yet? No. Let me show. Can I show my P puck talk? Yeah, really let's quick? do PD's puck talk. And really this go, and this goes on that Schmaltz play. So let's yeah, and it's going to be super quick. It. PD's puck talk. We weren't going to do one. I just want to. The reason I want to do it is for Kolya Chonuk, because it was his first NHL game. He doesn't get an assist on this play. He's a guy that's kind of an unsung hero. A lot of hits tonight. He makes the play that causes the goal. It's Kolya Chonuk going back to get the puck. Toronto's on the four check and the breakout pass. He puts it off the Honda sign there right off the boards and he beats two Toronto Maple Leaf four checkers with one pass. And if a defenseman can beat two four checkers with one pass, his job is done. After he makes that pass off the boards, I'll go to the next one. After he makes the pass off the boards, it's a four on three. So his pass beats the four checkers, the two four checkers. Now it's a four on three. And Dezingle, if you look where he is, He's got three Maple Leafs to get through. He's got to get through Simmons. He's got to get through Brody. Riley's going to take Smoltz along the wall and go to the next one. Dezingle's speed takes him right by Simmons. So now Brody points Simmons to take the trailer. It's a two-on-two. This is an easy play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Riley takes Schmaltz. Brody has to take Zingle to the net. It's a two-on-two. This is an easy play. But we talked about Dezingle's speed, his drive, his effort. If you go to the next one. So Dezingle... Gets right past Brody, speeds past Brody. It's all about effort and will. And I tell you what, the pass that Schmaltz delivers through Riley's stick and puts it on the tape of Dezingle, if you go to the next one, not only does it get by Riley's stick, Mrazek's stick too, as he tries to reach out and get the stick on the puck. It gets by him too. Dezingle beats Brody, puck in the net. Yotes win, all because of Kolyachonik making an unbelievable play. For a guy in his first NHL game with uh, Toronto Maple Leaf pounding down on him against the wall, he's still able to have his composure, get around the net, and make the right play. So you get to get – you make a great play in your first NHL game, and unfortunately, 
he doesn't get an assist for the play because it goes. He doesn't get an no. It doesn't get an assist for the play, first, but Galchenyuk to small to small to the single. But, but it, that play, the play all happen happens because of Kolchenyuk. Yeah. You don't see it on the replays because they always cut it at the three on two. <laughs> but Kolchenyuk makes that play. Um, so good on him. I mean, I mean, I'm really happy for him doing that too, and he's physically engaged in that game too. He's the guy we're going to see um, in games to come for sure. And here he is. <laughs> so now we're welcoming in um, <laughs> a no <Who's> name. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know who this is. No name reporter. Do people reporter. in Arizona know this person? Who is this guy? No name <laughs> reporter. No name no name reporter. Can you explain that, Leah? Can I explain it? Yeah. I don't think the Craig context? Can yes. Oh. Or does Craig need to explain the context? Craig who's Craig? You, you, who's, <laughs> who's Craig? Exactly. You know <laughs> name. You're just looking for clickbait. Yeah, that's all, that's all I was doing. That's all I was doing today. Um, yeah, so someone in on Twitter called Craig a no-name reporter after he wrote his article, which, Craig, by the way, we already talked about the, the articles, like, if you actually read the article, you would see that it was, like, a laundry list of things that Coyotes would need to do, and Leafs fans were just exploding, acting <laughs> like... Shocking. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> we'll let... You take it away. I know you Thanks have to Nicholas, things by the to way, say. before we move on, Nicholas said that was a positive from PD's Puck Talk. And everyone was shocked. It was like a Coyotes win and PD's Puck Talk on a Coyotes yeah. goal. It was just like thing, two events that don't happen simultaneously often. We got an Austin Matthews goal and a Coyotes win tonight. It was it was quite a night, guys. It and, was. Uh, and, we, and we got to troll Toronto fans for a full day, which is always a lot of fun. Well, not, like, seriously how can you help not doing it now craig yeah. like they just lost to the worst team in hockey with not only are they the worst team in hockey well not anymore because montreal lost but this is a team that has six players out of the lineup their head coach is out like come on like really like it was a I, it was an ahl defense tonight that it was. They, they rolled out an ahl blue line phil housley said it himself we talked to howie after the game because obviously andre wasn't available and he said i don't know how many games of nhl experience we had but like Shane Gostas Bear had all of them. So. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> he had more than the other five combined. Probably. And, and yeah, that's true. So, it's so nuts. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's an impressive win. And you have to <laughs> you have to hang it all on Vimelka. I mean, we're not we're not being naive here on how this game was won. Goaltending was unbelievable yeah. tonight. Yeah, and he's done this a few times. Uh it's interesting. I talked to him after the game about this string of games that he's had to play consecutively. And he had to do it earlier in the season, as we, we all know, and he, he wasn't prepared for it at that point. Um, you know, he's fresh in North American hockey, not used to doing this. <laughs> I'm seeing some of the comments, uh, seeing, uh, you know, not, <laughs> not used to seeing this kind of action, but he said he's, he's much better prepared for it. Now he's learned how to, you know, do recovery. He's learned how to take care of his body. He's learned what sort of mental state that he needs to be in. It's really fascinating to me to see the growth of Karel Vemelka less than half halfway into the season, and he's already able to put together strings of games like he's doing. Um, look, I don't know where this is going. I don't know what his ceiling is. I don't think anybody knows at this point. But the early returns look really good that this guy doesn't look out of the out of place in the NHL. Way more than that, he actually looks really good. Yeah, and he, you know what, tonight, Craig, we've talked about it as we've watched him. There are nights when he's sliding around and he's very busy. We yeah. haven't seen that in a while from him now. That was mm -hmm. his last stretch, and that was back in November. So he's been for December and now through January. He's been able to calm his game down, and he just looks more, like you said, he's matured his game in a short period of time because he's a little bit older than a rookie goaltender normally is, and he's been able to fine-tune his game, and he has been much, much better and consistently better now. Um, even in the loss the other night, he still had a 46-save loss against Winnipeg and gave up two. So, I mean, it's he, he's progressing so quickly, um, and I think this team is clearly going to need that kind of goaltending if they are going to put wins together or even close games together. They need that kind of goaltending. So that was great to see. Um, who else did you get to talk to down there tonight? Uh, Ryan Dezingle, who's always great to talk to. I mean, come, comes back after a month off and scores two goals. So that's that's pretty impressive in and two of Two amazing goals, too. Yeah, the, the setup by Nick Schmaltz. I mean, yeah. we've, we've been waiting to see something from Nick Schmaltz, and that was a heck of a sauce pass right at the doorstep. Yeah. So yep. just a tap in for P him. PD broke that one down on PD's puck talk. Nice. Tonight, yeah, it was so. good to see him. And, and Schmaltz is the guy we wanted more from all season long. I know he was hurt for the, the, the stretch in the beginning, but we need to see more 
from him offensively. Like he's a guy that's got so much skill. You know, some of those moves that Austin Matthews makes one on one, yeah. Nick Schmaltz has the ability to do that kind of thing. Like he has that kind of hands and he can make those in tight plays one on one. We just haven't seen it. Um, hopefully that starts to happen now. I hope. One of the things uh, that Nick Schmaltz is still dealing with is that hand is not fully healed. That's why he's not playing center. He can't take face-offs. He's not fully healed yet. So people have to keep that in mind when they're watching him. But <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm, I was going to ask you what you guys thought of uh, future Coyote Austin Matthews tonight, but we need to get to some of these comments. So go ahead. Lee. The comments are <laughs> like, everyone is killing me tonight. Like, the, uh -oh. who is this random guy on the post game show like how did much in super chat did craig have to pay to get on the post game show <laughs> oh my god See? who's I craig just, like, yeah, who? what is going on with craig's color what is oh he's got a hoodie i didn't even i couldn't even tell it was a hoodie I, is that a hood? I thought it was a yeah. cape for right. a while well, why is this surprising to you? Because you always wear a sport coat. Who does? Who are we talking about? <laughs> it is it literally is some random guy in the stands with a hoodie. Uh, yeah, I'm no name reporter. I, I wear coats. <laughs> That's yeah. true. I don't wear a suit. Well, no name reporter. Somehow you were given a credentialed pass to join the <laughs> Leafs um, availability <laughs> earlier today, um, yeah. where you got the chance to catch up with Austin Matthews and Michael Bunting, who Michael Bunting also had an assist on the Matthews goal. So you know, good for the former Coyote to have an impact, I guess, if you if you want to look at it that way. And Craig, we haven't shown any of the footage yet, but should we go ahead and see what Austin Matthews had to say about his sure. return to Arizona? Yeah, All let's right, roll let's, into that. Let's and, roll and, it. Yeah, it's future home. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, like I've said, I, I really enjoy coming home. Um, this is where I spend my off seasons. Uh, my family and friends uh, all live down here. So it's always special coming back and playing in front of everybody. Yeah, I just try to kind of soak it in, honestly. Um, like I said before, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I came to a, a bunch of games here growing up, um, you know, saw a lot of, uh, saw, you know, had a lot of memories here. So, um, you know, I just try to kind of stay present and soak it all in. I know, um, you know, I have plenty of people in the stands here watching me, family, friends and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I just try to take it all in and just go out there and, and focus on playing hockey. Did you guys see his dad's hat? We did. The cowboy hat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. You know, he's thinking about soaking it all in, having people supporting him. He can have all of that yeah. and more when he signs here. 2024. <laughs> Keep the trolling going. Keep the trolling going the entire show. Yeah. Hey, did you, have you guys done the, the last time? Have you nope. done that segment yet? No, oh, we were waiting oh, for you, Craig. Oh, so how are we rolling this out? I, I don't even know. You know, I covered the No, game. we can just. You guys get to have all the fun, drink Which wherever segment? you are. And... are I'm not doing? drinking. I'm drinking water. I just so... cracked mine. And oh. Craig, I, I, it's part of my New Year's thing, Craig, you know, the skinny fat guy thing. So I haven't had a beer all week and I was trying not to on the show, but I can't. You couldn't help it. it. Was it because I showed up? That's when it started. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not the okay. first time he drove me to drink. So, so in our continuing of trolling um, the Leafs fan base, we thought, you know, it's been a while since the Leafs have won the Stanley Cup. Actually, it's been since 1967. So we thought, what are some other things that happened in the year 1967 that we can help contextualize how long it's been? And chat, if you want to chime in, please do. Um, I will start. The first Rolling Stone magazine was published in 1967. <laughs> wow, that's going way back. You know what? It's been so long since the Leafs won the cup that Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre, had not yet assumed the prime minister position in Canada when the Leafs last won the cup. And you know what? Tweet, text, email, Instagram or TikTok has never been sent. The Leafs, the Leafs won the cup. The cup. <laughs> it's never been faxed, emailed. No. Pete, Anyone you were, else? You weren't born yet, were you? No, I, I we know not. you weren't born, Leah. Yeah, okay. I was not. My born. dad, my my dad was nine. So the Leafs and the Coyotes have won the same number of cups since I've been alive, and that is a true story. Wow. It, it is. It is stunning, isn't it? And it's stunning when you put it into the the. the 
the number of outstanding Hall of Fame players yeah. that have played there, the amount of money that that organization has, the facilities that they have. It is absolutely a miracle that they haven't been able to put this together. I, I, I P was 16. Well, no, the, Craig. The Super, Bowl, <laughs> the Super Bowl era of the NFL had just started one year earlier to keep keep things in perspective. Yeah, and I hate to bash on them. I, the, the league would, it would be great for the league if this team could win a Stanley Cup. I, I don't know what else they need to do. Like this right now, they bring in, you know, their hometown guy to bring be the captain and John Tavares. You've got unbelievable skill with Matthews and Lena under and Marner. It goaltending is an issue. Then, you know, they're getting too much scoring. If they get great goaltending, they don't have somebody that can score. It's just, they've <laughs> never been able to put it all together. And, you know, is this the year? The Eastern Conference is incredibly difficult. Sure is. I, I, I just don't know how the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to get through all of the teams they need to get to just to get to the Stanley cup finals. I just, I don't know how they can do it, but you know, Montreal did it last year with a team yeah. that shouldn't have been there, barely made the playoffs. So it, it could happen. So we'll have to wait and see, but it has, <laughs> when you said that out there today, uh, Craig, about the 1967 and you start looking at it, you go, Oh my goodness. It's hard to believe that it's been that long. Did you, yeah. do we have that photo? No. Oh, you can I tweet love that it. Photo. Just pull okay. up your high school senior pictures, Craig. They're all the same year. <laughs> <laughs> They're all black Seriously. and white sepia tone. Wow. Oh it's brutal. Gosh. It's brutal. There you go. Oh the league gosh. has it from six to 12. Wow. Wow. Six teams. It could awesome. happen. Listen, they, they could finally break through. I would love to I see mean, it. I mean, so much. Look at Nicholas. The, the Boeing 737 made its first flight in 1967. <laughs> wow. That's good stuff, Steve. That is good stuff. Wait, That's Red good. Kelly played his last game in 1967. Elvis got married. <laughs> wow. The Titanic was impressive. still lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, this is good stuff. See, this is I had asked people in the Discord to bring it here, and now people are bringing it. This is great. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, if you don't know the article that we're talking about that caused all of this kerfuffle today, it's actually, it's unlocked, right, Craig? It is. At gophx.com. So you can head over to gophx.com and read that one. Um, even if you're not a member, but if you read that one and want to read more Coyotes coverage, you can do so by becoming a member at gophnx.com. Um, a year membership also gets you a shirt from the PHNX lockers. You can rock what Petey's wearing and what he has going on there in the background, too. A bunch of shirts, lots of great stuff. There's just a new Cardinal shirt released just in time for the playoffs, so be sure to check that out at the PHNX locker. You can also get access to the Discord, which we just mentioned. Petey and Craig and I are in there daily um, chatting with everyone. One, it's a fun place to be. It's a fun place to also, you know, continue the trolling conversation. So <laughs> join the family. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm going to plug this like 10 times this episode. Please follow PHNX underscore Coyotes on Twitter. If we get, I think we need 200 more followers by the end of January and Craig will drink an IPA. He will drink a whole IPA start to finish. Over what, what time period? I don't know, but he will finish it. Why does it always involve me consuming something? You agree to it. Why has that become the default? Because that's what we want to see, Craig. That's what the people pay to see. Taste. Bougie taste. They pay for your content. I have bougie You're taste because guy. I don't drink coffee from a gas station or a you, can. That's you bougie? are the bougie guy on the show. Okay. okay. Clearly, for okay. sure. You um, are. just for the record, the winning line of that poll was most people get it from Starbucks and Dutch Bros. Yeah, I figured. I, I gave them an out. Uh, yeah, but what came, in, what came in second, Leah? You, you know, don't want to mention that. Okay. It All wasn't right. me. I was well, last. You were yeah. last, Petey. I just want to get back to the studio so I can start wearing pants again. Like, <laughs> can we just go back? Are we back in the studio? No, we're not back in the studio Saturday either. No. Nope. We're not Friday or Saturday. Are we in the studio Monday, maybe? Leah's no. bailing on us anyway. She's yeah, leaving. I'm Have leaving we announced that weekend. yet? Yeah, yeah I'm going to LA. I don't Is that breaking news? <laughs> it's not that breaking. I'm it's kind of breaking here this I, I, Leah. It is breaking to me because I don't know if you've noticed. I have never done a show without you. Yes, you, you have. Did? You did one with Aaron. Well, we did when I went one when I went to the Harry Styles concert. That's true. We did. And everyone was giving night. me shit about Harry Styles, but Harry Styles is headlining Coachella. So, just saying. Yeah, you're right. I did. I did do that one with Aaron, and I've done a few with what? with Craig. What What's the attraction of Coachella? Like the area know. itself. It's just desert. Yeah, it's kind of a like a dust bowl, right? 
Yeah, I've driven past actually, it a few times. Yeah, so. I'll be driving past it this weekend when I'm yeah. going to LA with the PHNX Cardinals crew to cover the NFL playoffs. But a lot of people There's go to this. Like I remember, Coyotes used to like Brad Richardson used to go to Coachella. He loved it. So really, I haven't I haven't been, but you huh. know, I'm just wondering what the what all, what all the hype is about. A lot of people, really noisy, dusty, oh, dirty, and have to drive like... to get there. Yeah, PD's I nightmare. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure <laughs> so, I can see PD at Coachella burning. Can you imagine a PD video burning. series? Of I'd be bitching about the parking. PD. I'm those guys in the in the progressive ads. Are we gonna leave after the third quarter? <laughs> I swear to God, that's me. But, <laughs> can we that would be a great time. We'd have like PD in a quarter somewhere, just rocking back and, and forth. Oh, can you imagine me? <laughs> we gotta park all the way out here. Seriously, it's like this hot and dry. There's Leah's neighborhood uh, again. Yeah, wow, what's going on? Jesus, another Jesus arrest, Leah. boy. <laughs> Pounding down doors of Leah's neighbor SWAT team. Seriously, I'm expecting live? that one of these days. I'm just gonna. Ex- I'm expecting like the battering ram and just the watch Leah into her apartment. Just catch the the ABC News in the morning. You'll see Leah's apartment every day. <laughs> we might catch it on the live show. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Leah getting ready. Right. That's not fine. <laughs> not quite sure where she lives, but you guys are gonna see like the helicopter is gonna be blaring mm-hmm. a light uh, in my window. <laughs> right. Good grief. Oh my <sighs> god. So we got a lot of viewers tonight, huh? Yeah, yeah people, like, people rolling staccato like here. When the coyotes win. When the coyotes yeah. win in the after yeah. dark. This after dark thing. Did they win the other after dark? Yes. Remember yep. it yeah, went. The, we were post, pa- post at midnight. past midnight. Was, we were we were so on the stream, and it crossed into midnight. I remember that is so far past my bedtime. Have we hit all of our elements at Leo Morrow? Um, we haven't shown the punch card. <laughs> <laughs> if you did we get a, show did we put that. a win on it? Did we get we put did. a win on it? We did we get did to put, put a win. On it. We okay. did put a win. There it is. Thirty four. <laughs> for thirty fourth <laughs> game. Thirty four. Austin Matthews. Look at that. There you go. Did you see Karen's comment? Blink twice if you're okay. Twice if you're okay, (laughs) Leah. Either either that she's saying that she's worried about Karen's worried about her being alone with us, which (laughs) clearly is a danger sign, or or she's being captive in her own apartment by armed gunmen (laughs) in her neighborhood, which could be the case too. So we're just all worried about. I live in a safe neighborhood. I promise. (laughs) Yeah, every show. Oh my gosh. (sighs) Yeah, no wheel tonight. Somebody earlier, like way when we started, said, is this a wheel of fantasy simulation that we're living right now? Because that's honestly yeah. what it feels like. Yeah, that the Coyotes, it is, honestly, we couldn't have written that up as a wheel of fantasy. Coyotes beat the Toronto Maple Leafs on a 146 save, one goal performance off Karelva Melka, while Austin Matthews extends <laughs> And his, Ryan Dezingle you know, gets yeah. two goals in <laughs> after returning Oh for being God. injured for a month. It is. Yep. It's, a, it's a wheel of fantasy that we couldn't have made up. And we haven't had that for a long time. Thank goodness. It's so much I, better oh. not. By the way, how much fun How much fun was Paul Bissonnette tonight on TNT? Oh, my God. We showed we talked a picture about that of too. him. Yeah. yeah, it was outrageous. Did you see the, the stick-breaking thing? What was that all about? Yeah. Oh, that, just, <laughs> just beautiful. I think he's that currently is. at the emergency room right now. Craig, I mean. Was it, was it, what is it, his hip or his thigh? That Yeah, I couldn't tell what he injured. That was yeah, a letter. his though. thigh. Broken femur right now. TNT, sorry to say this. TNT is so much better than ESPN in terms of their coverage. I mean, NBC was here, and, and now TNT has just taken it way up here. How much fun is Liam McHugh having now with this crew? They're having I know, a blast. seeing this him chug great. goggles across a parking lot, which, by <laughs> the way, Petey said we will not – be breaking yeah, sticks breaking and sticks i said we show. need to find content during the off season so nothing is closed off shane just sent us a super chat shane sent us a super chat for Wait, PD to buy some new pants wow. <laughs> by the way that no. brings me a reminder i will be joining the deef tomorrow on the daily bet show oh look bringing at that. some puck talks nice and we, we might be talking about tuka rask's return Oh. Um, to the Boston Bruins tomorrow night. You and know, the one thing I like about guys. ESPN's coverage is this video breakdown stuff that I'm seeing lately. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, great. Really, Throw that really, in. Notice I didn't really say impressive. anything. <laughs> and bashing ESPN yeah. no, it's just, I'm talking about, you know, the studio. Like, these guys are having so much fun. It's no, just, it's like they've, it's like the NBA. It's, they're doing the same thing with the NHL. They're having, they're having fun, like, fun. but we have fun too. And I think, yeah, that's, you know what? like, that's exactly. what people want to watch. We clearly need to put, put Petey in the studio. That's Hockey what is fun. At ESPN. Hockey is Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Hockey's fun. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, yeah, that's what they need. They need Petey's puck talk. That's right. That's what they need. 
They do. <sighs> yeah, they had a, it was great. And you see the the the, the strong pro coyote. Well, I don't know how pro coyote Rick talk it is right now, but but um, there was there was a lot of pro hockey or um, pro coyote talk on that panel. And I got to give it to Paul Bissonette. Like he when he brings it for the coyotes, he brings it. And that's that's full the on howling. Coyote. My cat howling. kept looking up, like looking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good on him. It is. It's it's good TV, yeah. and it's good that the Coyotes had that kind of performance on national TV because that could have been could have been bad. Like it, it could have been bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm I'm thrilled with how it went. I mean, you don't want to get outshot like that. You don't want to average six shots, period. But if you are going to have that performance, like I said earlier, for Vimelka to get that you know, national and not just national here, but national in Canada to get that spotlight. It was great. So I'll take I, it. Craig, can you wait to hear what the, the media in Toronto is saying tomorrow? Is, uh, the, is this, is the media going to be on fire tomorrow, dissecting this and trade probably. bait and people probably. getting fired? Yeah. yeah it, they'll, they'll lose their minds over one loss, you know, after they played a shootout game in Vegas the night before and had to travel, but that'll all be washed aside. You yeah. can't lose to the Coyotes, right? Well, I they're the rumor has it that they are staying overnight in the valley. They have a day off tomorrow. Day off tomorrow in the valley. So, so Austin Matthews can get a home cooked meal at his uh yep. at his that, parents' house. That light is green for those young men tonight. That's a green, green, <laughs> green, 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 green. So that where that they can't reason. do that in Toronto. I was surprised getting crazy there that if I'm the coach, I'm saying, Hey, tomorrow, you, you guys want a day off tomorrow? You need to win. Otherwise ice time is 11 o'clock tomorrow. You get a big push. We can go out tonight in Scottsdale and have fun and have the day off at the pool and go to Austin's house. <laughs> or we could practice. I, I thought, I honestly thought that was going to be the carrot they dangled, but maybe they did. I, I don't know, but it, it didn't, didn't work. They, they tried though. And you knew, you know, the funny thing is Craig, after the first 20 minutes when they hung in it, you could see Toronto's pushing it. Like they were trying to make yep. one more extra pass or they're trying to make one more extra play. Like they were grabbing it a little bit tighter and it, it is frustrating. And we're up against a goalie that is stopping everything. It's hard. Cause you, you drive so much more to the net. You're trying so much harder than in reality. If you just like ease off your stick or ease off the play, it might have more success. But when a goalie's feeling like that, you just, just you try so much harder and they have so much that you could see it in toronto's eyes in the second period are those your college stats pd yeah what's wrong with that three five nine (laughs) save 80 is that true maybe not quite the same as corral vamelka tonight no that's why i didn't play that's why i played six freaking games in a 42 game schedule figure it out it was a good door opener and i will say this my key to my north dakota playing days was the kirk cameron perm because back those days, the goalie didn't have to wear his mask on the bench like they do now in college. So I had sick flow. Oh, I had a permed please mullet. send us photos. I had a permed mullet please. and I could skate around. Oh, no. You had a mullet? I had a permed mullet. Yeah. I was oh, money my. on the bench opening the door. Wow. Solid wow. towel wrapped around my neck. Yeah. That we was my need glorious. to see photos. That That is that is my career at North Dakota. Yeah, Petey, we're going to have to pull old photos of our, you know, just oh. to show off our hair game from when we were uh, goalies yeah. back in the... Uh, yeah, we won't see the decade. We'll see. Yeah, way we'll before see. I was a baby in that original yeah. photo. Hey, that, that, yeah, <laughs> wow, a Kirk Cameron reference. I don't even know if Leah knows who Kirk Cameron is. Do you know who that is? Growing yeah. pants? No. Yeah, lost reference. No, she doesn't seem she doesn't seem to care either. So no. maybe we should <laughs> sign off on that note. Yeah, side, dude. Do we hit everything, Leah? I think so. We also, I mean, we also had a clip from Michael Bunting, but he was just talking about how much he appreciated um, his time in Arizona, and he really Tucson. spoke highly of Tucson. A I think lot. we can show that. We'll show it again in a, one of our Tucson shows because I think that that yeah, there you yeah, go. We, there you go. Yeah, we definitely will. I don't want to waste but, the clip. It was a really yeah. good clip, but we yeah, it was a really it. great clip. But he spoke very, very highly of Tucson, um, highly of the the Coyotes organization, and you know, just. But he also said like he couldn't pass up the opera i know a lot of people a lot of coyotes fans have been questioning like why they couldn't sign bunting or why bunting didn't sign here but he just couldn't pass up the opportunity to you know play for his hometown team and team and you know tonight he's on the line with austin matthews in a playoff contender stanley cup contending team in toronto or he could be you know here with the coyotes (laughs) i mean (laughs) who who passed montreal so the coyotes are now 31st and you know what if they had to pass Montreal any day, I'm 
today was fine to do it. Well, Montreal's coming here Monday for President. Yeah, it sets Day, up so. the big the big bowl on Monday. The lottery at two bowl, o'clock. baby. A lottery right. bowl Battle Monday at two. Monday at two o'clock in the afternoon. Really? Oh with yeah. A bunch, with a that's bu- a with perfect and screaming kids, right? Usually that's the president. That's Day a game, right? perfect time slot for that game. <laughs> so yeah, it is. It is. Two o'clock on a Monday. Two o'clock like, on a two Monday. Two o'clock on a Monday between, between the Canadians and the, the Canadians Coyotes. And the, Coyotes. <laughs> the thirty-first and thirty-second. Is that one on national TV, Leah? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, it didn't quite make it on national TV. Yeah, they're gonna oh, air it in Times Square, actually. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and, and Leah's skipping that one. Big surprise. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, bigger callings, <laughs> NFL playoffs. So Sean and I have to sit and call that bowl game. That's the lottery bowl. That's what we're, we have the to call lottery that. bowl. Yep. Yep. We're going to call it the lottery bowl. We're going to, we're, we're, we'll have fun with that one too, though. We'll yeah, have fun we, with it. At least, but, at least previewing it. So, yes. But before then, um, we have Colorado. <laughs> Twice. Back to back, home and home. That one, I mean, we've th- this game and bottle this feeling, enjoy it because I don't think yeah. it's going to happen. Did you know they weekend. lost their last game? Yeah. Yeah, but like at the end. Do you know how often Natural, Colorado yeah. loses two in a row? We'll talk Who's about that? it tomorrow on the bet show. Okay. Oh, there's your plug PHNX Beds Daily every day, Monday through Friday at noon. Catch PD tomorrow with Shane, who is lurking in the comments here somewhere, um, to get your hockey picks. PD blank slate tomorrow. I know tonight <laughs> maybe yeah. wasn't your night. Oh, I had a good but... night tonight. I had a good oh, you did? Okay. I did. There's more okay. games than just this Yeah, one. there's true. More games. And I know Shane had a good night in the NBA. So tell him, um, go on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. You can bet on all the sorts of stuff there. Sign up using the promo code PHNX if you have not signed up yet. So head over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. What's up, Isaiah? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Sorry you joined us I know he's <laughs> so late. late. I know. On our but, late show. But the good news is you can, you know, just rewind and go back to the start. Um but yeah, so we will be previewing this matchup tomorrow, but it's going to be a later release podcast because we want to wait for the NHL All-Star announcement. So we will um, have that news in that podcast. We will also be previewing the Colorado matchup with Jesse from DNBR Avalanche, which is our sister station up in Denver. So looking forward to that one. And then, of course, um, we will have our post-game shows for you after both Colorado games. So Probably not as celebratory, but it's fine. Well, hey, who knows now? We never, you never know. know. Maybe you Veggie is just going to like ride the you wave. Wait, Sean, show Craig uh, the king of the game graphic. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Perfect. Oh Very, nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Tim said, before you sign off, I want to hear everyone's favorite dinosaur. I have to go raptor because the freaking beef with the raptor and Devin Booker has been wow. everything to me this week. Good social media content. I'm going T-Rex because why wouldn't you? Allosaurus. Who? What? Yeah, you're going to have to look it up now. <laughs> what? That was the most Craig answer of all Yeah, it is. It is Craig. No, I'm, I, well, I, was a di- I was a dinosaur geek as a kid. I oh, love dinosaurs. my surprise. <laughs> and by the way, as, we, as you know, we just went to uh, Universal Studios, so we did Jurassic World. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what did you say, Craig? What was it? Jurassic World. Oh, the, no. the name of the dinosaur? Yes. The, the, oh, the my Alice, God. The Allosaurus. <laughs> Is somebody put a, putting an Allosaurus on the screen? No, somebody said their favorite dinosaur is Petey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ouch, truth hurts. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Anyway, oh, we're off the rails. This always happens. Like, the Coyotes win and we talk about other stuff, but it's just, you know, you just ride the wave. You're in a good That's mood. Okay. Um, please follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Um, if you're watching us live on YouTube now, head over to wherever you get your podcast and like and subscribe and leave us a review there. If you're listening on audio, head over to PHNX Sports on YouTube. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can set reminders um, daily for our show specifically as well. So be sure to do that so you don't miss a thing. You can follow each of us on Twitter as well. All of Craig's breaking news Pissing no off name Leafs reporter. fans. Yeah, at No Name Reporter, at Craig S. Morgan. Um, so be sure to check all of that out on Twitter. Any any closing notes, guys, before we uh, head veggie, out? Veggie, veggie, veggie. 
Veggie, veggie, veggie. Eat your, ve eat your vegetables. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got to say. See you all next time. <laughs> See you next time. Good night. Thank you.